So, did Terry's memory come back? No, not yet. Well, we're super lucky that she forgot only about us. My husband and mother-in-law took advantage of the fact that I was sleeping to reveal their true nature. I hope we can get her to come back to our place so we can use her again. Why do I have to do all the housework? It's a real pain in the ass. She's the one who's supposed to be doing all the work. Why don't you get better by now, you useless bitch? My name is Terry, a 32-year-old office worker. This sucks. I don't know how I let it happen. Then I heard a familiar voice and I opened my eyes. Terry, you are awake. Thank God. I opened my eyes and there was my mother with tears in her eyes. I looked around and realized that I was in a hospital room. Mom, why am I here? Seems like you suddenly got dizzy outside and fell down the stairs. What? Is that so? You had a concussion and lost consciousness. You were rushed to the hospital by ambulance. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Don't apologize. I'm so glad you are awake. We gotta get a doctor now. Said that, my mother left the room. And then a man came into the room, as if to replace her. The man was looking at me awkwardly. Siri, are you okay? Excuse me? Who are you? Do I know you from somewhere? What? I'm sorry, I don't remember. You're kidding, right? I'm Vince. I had no idea who he was. This man calls me by name, as if he is familiar with me. But for some reason, I can't remember anything about this man. I've never seen his face before. And I think I've never heard his name before. Vince? Then the man said something surprising. I'm your husband. What? I was confused. I was supposed to be single. I was never married. But the man in front of me says he is my husband. You don't really remember anything, do you? Well, that's... I don't know. I don't even know if I have no memory under the circumstances. While I was in trouble, my mother came with a doctor. Oh, Vince, you're back. Yes, I brought her some change of clothes. My mother and the man are having a normal conversation. Could this man really be my husband? The man looked troubled and started to explain the situation to my mother. Um... Terry doesn't seem to remember me. Maybe she has memory loss. Huh? My mother and the doctor's eyes widen. At Vince's comment. Let's arrange for an examination immediately. The doctor said so. And I was admitted to the hospital for a test. For a few days until the test results came back. Many people came to see me. One after another. People from work and my friends came to see me. I remember them all. I try to remember what I did for a living, and I did. How on earth could I have forgotten the man I called my husband? And there were other people I couldn't remember. His parents, especially my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law came to visit me several times, but I couldn't remember her as I couldn't remember my husband. I remember the others no problem. I only forgot my husband and mother-in-law. Then the doctor told me the results of the test. At first, they thought it was dramatic because I fell down the stairs. However, they said it wasn't dramatic because I didn't have any bleedings in my brain from hitting my head on the concrete in the street. Therefore, they said it was probably psychogenic, triggered by the head injury. The doctor's diagnosis made some kind of strange sense to me. Whenever I try to remember my husband and mother-in-law, I get pain in my head. 
It's as if there is something I don't want to remember. I wonder if my memories will ever come back. My husband and mother-in-law are surprised that I don't remember them, but they seem to be concerned about me. Doctor, how long is Terry going to stay in the hospital? I hope you let her out soon. I heard she fell down the stairs. I'm glad she's all right. But the doctor had explained to them. But they'd better wait a while. And even if she could be discharged, it would be better for her to stay at her own parents' house until her memory comes back. When the doctor said that, the in-laws' eyes widened. Why? Terry is my wife. That's right. And she was living with us. Are you saying you were going to take my daughter-in-law away from us? I was surprised at my mother-in-law's sudden loud voice. The doctor was also surprised. Please, calm down. Also, this is a hospital, so please be quiet. When the doctor said that, my parents-in-law kept their mouths shut. At at this point, I had a sudden headache. Terry, what's wrong? The doctor noticed something wrong with me. I'm sorry, my head hurts. Let's get you checked out right away, shall we? After the doctor said this to me, he urged my in-laws to leave. The in-laws left the hospital room with, with grim faces. Their faces did not show that they were worried about me. Are you okay? After my in-laws left. The doctor asked me with a worried face. I felt a little better, actually, after they left. I see. You probably didn't have a good relationship with your husband or his parents. Well, I guess that they were putting a lot of stress on you. Ring any bells? I don't know, but I guess you're right. That's what I thought when I heard the doctor's words. I'm sure. That what happened at my parents' in law house was so bad for me, that my brain drowned out the bad memories of when I was badly injured. When I think about it, their panic when I was told by the doctor that I should go back to my parents' house seems suspicious to me. Perhaps they were in a hurry because they would no longer be able to use me for their convenience. I instantly became afraid of my in laws. What in the world were they doing to me when we were living together? The only thing I could think of while living them was bullying. Did my in-laws treat me that badly? But when I try to remember what happened at my in-laws' house, I couldn't remember at all. When I try to remember, my head hurts like hell. When I told my parents about it, they were very worried. But honey, you told me that living together with them wasn't a problem. Maybe you were holding back to avoid worrying us, right, Terry? Um, I don't know, but if that's the case, I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You're still at a loss of memory, and we don't know the truth yet. Then, my father seemed to have an idea. And he suggested something. I wonder if it's safe to do that, or he'll find out. Well, let's just hope he doesn't find out. I was worried, but I wanted to know the truth anyway, so I decided to carry out his plan. Terry, how do you feel? The door of the hospital room opened, and my husband came in. What? You're sleeping? He mumbles to himself. I am awake, but I am pretending to be asleep for some reason. I wonder how my husband will react in front of me in my sleep. I am watching him carefully to see if he reveals his true nature again. He sits down on a chair next to the bed and sighs. I hear the lid of the can of coffee pop open. Then I hear the sound of coffee gurgling down my husband's throat. I took deep breath and pretended to be sound asleep. Then the door to the hospital room opened again. I thought my husband had left, but it seemed someone had come in. Vince, 
You got here first. Oh, Terry asleep? Yeah. She's been asleep since I arrived. Are her parents here? I haven't seen them yet. I don't think they are coming today. My husband was checking to see if anyone else was coming to the hospital room, as if he had something to hide. I thought it was kind of weird. And they started talking something unbelievable. So, did she get her memory back? No, she hasn't. So, she still doesn't remember what happened when she was injured? That's right. I don't want her to remember that anyway. Well, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that she is forgotten about us. My husband and mother-in-law took advantage of the fact that I was sleeping to reveal their true nature. I hope I can get her to move back to her house so we can use her again. Why do I have to do all the housework? It's a real pain in the ass. She's the one who's supposed to be doing all the work. Yeah, right. Why don't you get better now, you useless bitch? When I heard their disparaging tone, suddenly a memory came floating back to me. Very, very bad memory. I remembered that I was treated horribly by mother-in-law on a daily basis. Hey, Terry! What's with this food? It has no flavor. Make it again right now. But your husband likes it light flavored. I like strong flavors. Make mine stronger. But if I make a new batch now, I'll be late for work. I don't care if you are late. It's more important my husband and I will have decent meal. Not only does my mother-in-law have me make breakfast for the four of us, she even made me cook lunch for my mother-in-law and father-in-law every day in the morning. Plus, I had to prepare a lunchbox for my husband, which made me extremely exhausted every morning. And when I came home from work, I had to prepare dinner, and then I had to do the laundry and cleaning. I always bathe last, and it's only at midnight that I can go to bed after all the chores are done. But in the morning, I have to wake up at around 5 a.m. every day. They were abusing me like this, so I was physically and mentally exhausted. I was in such a state that I could have collapsed at any moment. And I also remember the time when I was injured when I lost my memory. It was when I was in the car that my husband was driving. We had gone out that day to buy a birthday present for my mother-in-law. My husband had forced me to go to all kinds of stores. He finally decided on a gift and we were driving home happily. But at the time, I was so tired that I fell asleep in the passenger seat. Then my husband stopped the car suddenly and snapped at me you've got to be kidding me what are you doing sleeping oh i'm sorry get out of the car and walk home you lousy wife the next thing i knew he got out of the driver's seat and opened the passenger's door he unbuckled my seat belt and tried to force me to get out i made a crouching motion with my hands on my head but my husband grabbed my arm and pulled me down. I fell to the ground with great force. I probably had a concussion from the strong impact and fainted. This is how I remember everything. I had to leave the hospital as soon as possible and call the police. I acted as if I had just woken up. Just as the in-laws finished their conversations, when they realized I was awake, they suddenly smiled and pretended to be kind to me. Terry, you are awake. How are you feeling? Take it easy. You can count on us if you need anything. I was so scared when they said those kind words to me. 
I'm sorry. I guess I fell asleep. I've been doing the test all day, and I am exhausted. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. I'll see you later. I apologized, and they left with smiles on their faces. I called my parents right away. I told them about what had happened, and how they had treated me. Of course, I told them about the time I was injured. My parents were very surprised and furious. They immediately called the police and filed a damage report, and we made up our minds to ask for a divorce. But all this had to be done without my in-laws finding out. I was discharged from the hospital and went back to my parents' house for the time being. My father and I visited my in-laws and asked them to let me take some of my belongings, so that I can stay with my parents for a little while to rest. My in-laws asked me if my memory had returned, and I lied and said it still hadn't. My in-laws looked worried at first, and I told them that doctor told me that my memory might not come back at all. When I told them that, their eyes lit up. Well, I'm sorry about that, but don't worry, honey. You come back to us when you're feeling better, okay? Yes, we care about you very much, Terry. My husband and mother-in-law are saying such things. My dad clenched his fist, but managed to calm down and be patient. He went to my room first to get my stuff. I collected my clothes and some other things, trying not to let my in-laws know. After that, I went straight to the police station with my father. I explained the circumstances of my injury and filed a damage report. The police said they would start investigating immediately. Then we hired a lawyer and discussed the divorce. Fortunately, I kept diaries of the abuse I received daily all this time. It was an unbelievable number of abusive behaviors recorded. My lawyer said that if I had this much of evidence, I could file for alimony on my demands. And when I was all set. I decided to meet with my husband. I sent a message to my husband that says, "Part of my memories came back, and I wanted to talk to him." Sure enough, he brought his mother with him. So I brought my father and my lawyer. So Terry, isn't it true that your memory came back? My husband and mother-in-law looked very upset. I told them calmly, showing no emotion. Yes, I remember. I remember how you got me injured, and how your parents bullied me. They turned pale when I said that. But my in-laws, still thinking they can get away with this, continued. Wait a minute. Do you have any proof that we did that? Yeah, Vince is right. Don't you dare say such a stupid thing. I can sue you for libel, you know. My husband and mother-in-law are still threatening me. Then, with a sigh, my lawyer opened his mouth. Hmm. <sighs> Terry kept dozens of diaries to record the abuse she received from you too. She also secretly recorded your conversations in the hospital, at our father's suggestion. The conversation when Terry was injured is also in evidence. When the lawyer said that, they were understandably upset. Wait a minute, recording? I put the finishing touches on my husband's agitation. I've already reported that you caused my injury. I filed a damage report. The security camera on the street caught you pulling me out of the car. One of these days, the police are going to bring you in for arrest for assault. Oh no! This can't be. My husband tried to run away. Then the lawyer said, "If you run away, you'll be charged with even more serious crimes." He fell on his knees, and his mother froze. Her face was also pale. "I'm divorcing you," 
and I am going to charge you alimony for the mental anguish as well. I said this and left with my lawyer and my father. After a while, my divorce from my husband was finalized and the alimony was paid. And my ex husband was arrested for assault. I did not settle and prosecuted him, and my ex husband was fined. My ex husband had already paid me alimony, and his savings were gone. So his parents paid a fine for the assault. His workplace found out about his arrest, of course. My ex husband was fired. Furthermore, the neighbors and relatives got to know about it. And the family became completely isolated. Because of his criminal record, my ex husband could not get a job at all, and he shut himself away from the family. My ex mother in law has to support a grown up child with a small pension and is forced to live a poor life. I, on the other hand, have successfully returned to work. I am working hard now. And I've just been promoted to manager. Now that I am back at home, I can save most of my income. Recently, I've been investing the money I've saved to increase my assets. I don't want to be in a relationship for a while. Instead, I'm going to take trips with my parents and spend more time with my family.